So just a few weeks from now, my wife and I are going to be leaving for a 12-day trip around Ireland, and I've been working over the last six or seven months on refining my camera setup into something that I think is going to work really well for travel videos. So I thought I would do a video and just kind of show you guys what I've come up with for my travel setup. The first thing that you can see here is the bag itself, so I'll talk about that. This is the Low Pro Slingshot 250. They do have a smaller version that is the 150, but I really, really like this camera bag, and there are a couple of things that I think set it apart from other uh, camera bags that are out there, especially the backpack style bags. If you notice, this has just one strap because it's a sling style instead of uh, like a backpack that would have two straps. And what that allows you to do is while you are wearing the pack, you can unclip the stabilizer strap and you're able to access the camera without ever actually having to take the bag off. In addition to that, they've really thought about the safety aspect of the fact that you're carrying around expensive camera gear because the main camera compartment actually unzips across the back of the bag. So if you have it completely zipped up and you're in say a crowded area, taking public transportation or something like that, there's no way for someone to just sneak up behind you and unzip the camera compartment and take off with your camera. So that's great just to have peace of mind while you're traveling. So the first thing that I'm going to take out of the bag is probably the most important part of the entire kit, and that is the camera. And you may be able to see I've got a couple of things going on here. I've got it on a table tripod, and this tripod is actually the little tripod that comes with the Zhiyun Crane Plus gimbal, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And since I was going to be bringing that with me anyway, instead of bringing a separate dedicated tripod just for the camera, I just added a little ball head to this tripod and that allows me to use it as a table tripod for the Sony camera. Now the camera itself is a Sony a6300. With all of that said, this is a really great camera, especially for the price. I get um, a great 4K image out of it, so I would recommend taking a look at it. The lens that I'm using on this is the Sigma 30mm 1.4 DC DN. I absolutely love this lens. Um, the autofocus works just as well, if not better, than the genuine Sony lens that I have. The f1.4 aperture lets in a lot of light, it gives me great depth of field, and I just overall get a really good looking image out of this lens. Now the only downside to it is that it is a prime lens set at 30 millimeters. So sometimes on a gimbal, you would want a wider image than that. And for that, I do have the kit lens that comes with the Sony a6300. This is Sony's 16 to 50 millimeter. Um, it's a very small, lightweight lens, so it's great for travel. The only downside to this is that it's a 3.5 to 5.6 aperture. So you don't get as good uh, low light, you just don't get as good depth of field. So the image out of this lens is not quite as good as it is with the Sigma, but I do get more versatility with this lens. So I'm taking both of those. And then I also have a microfiber cloth just for cleaning dust off the lenses. And I also have not just two, but four extra batteries for the a6300 in addition to the one battery that's already in the camera. Now, if you have ever used these Sony mirrorless cameras, you know that they really burn through batteries pretty quickly, especially when you're shooting in 4K. Next in the bag is the Rode VideoMic Pro, along with the coiled 3.5 millimeter cable that comes with this microphone. And the great thing about this microphone in regards to travel is that there are no batteries in it. And this microphone just gets a lot better audio than the built-in microphone in the camera, um, especially, especially if I'm in windy conditions because you can see this thing has a laughably large dead cat windscreen for the size of the microphone. So that just helps me to get a little bit better audio. The last piece of gear that I have in this main compartment is my drone, which is a DJI Mavic Air. And 
if you have not seen these things yet, they're incredible because there's a 4K drone inside this little case, which is insane. But they're very small, very portable. These things are like a travel videographer's dream because you can see how small and light they are. They simply unfold, if I can remember how to unfold this thing. And the image that you get from this camera is insane. I mean, it's not just 4K, but it's actually good quality 4K. And then here you can see I do have a battery already on the bottom of the drone. And then this is just a spare battery in this little LiPo safe battery case here. So I will zip up the main compartment here and flip it over. First, I'll go over this outermost small pocket. I have the charger for the Zion Crane gimbal. Um, this is a very small lightweight charger uh, powered through USB, which makes it great for traveling with. Along those same lines, I have this charger, which is the charger I use for the Sony a6300 batteries. This is the RAV Power charger. I really like this charger because you can see how incredibly thin it is. It's very lightweight and it's a dual charger so I can charge two batteries at the same time and it also is powered by USB as well so that makes it a lot easier charging on the go as opposed to having to find a wall plug. Um, here I just have a micro USB cable. This is the charger for the DJI Mavic Air and you can see this thing is almost the same size as the Mavic Air itself. So I really wish that DJI would come out with a smaller charger than this, but they have their special proprietary batteries and this is the charger that you have to use. So I am taking this with me, but one benefit is that it does have two USB ports on it. So I can use that to charge my many other things that um, are powered by a USB. So I will be taking this even though I wish it was a little bit smaller. Now, the last thing that I have in this compartment is the little Gerber Dime multi-tool. Now, this does have a knife built into it, which means I won't actually be able to take this on the trip to Ireland because I would not get very far through the TSA checkpoint with this. But any other time, I carry this with me because it does have a set of pliers, there's a flathead screwdriver, a knife, there's even a small pair of scissors in here. So little multi-tools like this can be a lifesaver when a camera plate is tightened down too tightly to the bottom of the camera, which I have a tendency to do. Now for the top compartment here, I have the Mavic Air controller, which just unfolds. The thumbsticks store in the bottom of the remote and then they just thread on like so. And that is great because I don't have to worry about the thumbsticks getting damaged while I'm traveling or the thumbsticks damaging something else in my bag. So DJI has done a really good job of making the uh, controller more portable. The next item in the bag is the Tascam DR10L. Now, the Tascam is not actually in this bag at the moment because I'm currently using it to record the dialogue for this video, but I am planning to take this even though I don't anticipate uh, recording much dialogue on the trip because the Tascam has a 3.5 millimeter adapter, I can connect the Rode Video Micro directly to the Tascam for recording any type of ambient sound that I might want to record like waves or uh, birds or cars driving by or whatever I might want to record, I can record it into the Tascam instead of the camera itself and I actually get a little bit better quality audio like that. Next I have a little sunshade that just unfolds and there are some little elastic bands that attach this to the iPhone that I use whenever I am flying the Mavic Air and it just makes the screen a little bit more visible in the sunlight. So this is just a small, lightweight little accessory that really makes quite a big difference when you're flying in bright sunlight. The next item in the bag is this small 4,000 milliamp battery bank, which 
having a little extra juice on hand is always a good thing because you never know when you might need to charge the iPhone or um, really anything that is USB powered. And last but not least is the Zion Crane Plus stabilizing gimbal. Now, as I said before, this little tripod is actually what goes on the bottom of the gimbal. So I'm gonna swap those out really quickly. So now I have the tripod back on the gimbal. And as you can see here, I have a quick release plate. This is a slick DQ-10 that I purchased on Amazon. And it's just a very small, lightweight aluminum uh, quick release plate that I put on the bottom of the camera. If you have a gimbal or you're thinking about getting a gimbal, I definitely recommend getting a quick release plate because it makes it so much easier to be able to pop the camera on and it already be balanced. Now, as for the gimbal itself, I would say this is probably the most important piece of camera gear that I have for my travel kit outside of the camera itself. And I say that because not only are you able to use this to get smoother, uh, more cinematic shots, just, you know, walking around, but having a gimbal really can replace um, many other pieces of equipment that you don't have to carry. So for example, I can put the gimbal in locked mode. No matter what I do with the camera, it's going to stay pointing in the same direction. So that can be used to replace a slider because I can just simply lock it in the direction that I want it to go. And I'm able to get a very slow, smooth slider shot without actually having a slider. In addition to that, I can get jib style shots, so I can get uh, raising and lowering. I can connect a monopod to the bottom of this handle to get a little more distance with the movement. And the gimbal also has a lot of other features like motion time-lapse features, and there's just so much versatility to a gimbal. So that's essentially everything that I will be taking with me in my camera bag for this trip. Now, if you're watching this video after I've gotten back from the trip, then there will be a link in the description below so that you can see my final Ireland travel video and you can see exactly what I was able to accomplish with a fairly minimalist travel setup. If you have a favorite piece of travel gear that I did not mention in this video, then please share it with me in the comments section below. I would love to hear what you prefer to take on your trips. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.